morning everyone. It, we are uh, just outside of Cincinnati today and heading on in to have, um, we're going to be visiting a specific location. I'll get into that in a minute. And we have two interviews today, but it's a hard day. Um, I got word yesterday that one of our, our neighbor friends committed suicide. And, and, and there just there just aren't words to be able to explain how you feel when you hear that news and the feeling that it gives me as a mom um, because it was a young person is it's just it, it's overwhelming and today we're going to be our event is going to the Underground Railroad Museum and um, you know, our family, we, we talked a little bit about some of what my kids have learned in school and about the conditions and the suicide rate during those conditions was high. And following that, both of our interviews today will be with mental health personnel. Um, first with a woman who deals in mass and school shootings and looking at the mental health uh, of, of these perpetrators and understanding what happens that leads up to these moments. And then following that, uh, a little more light shed on, 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 on a bit of darkness today. We're gonna be talking with Dr. Wallace J. Nichols, who has, he's a marine biologist, but has looked at the impact of the environment, particularly water and its effects on mental health and well-being. It's hard to have these discussions. It's hard to focus in these areas. And yet we have to. We have to have these discussions because the, what they now refer to as deaths of despair, that is literally what it says in the information packets that I'm going through and looking at statistics. That's, that's the term. And we, we have an epidemic in this country that we have to talk about. We need to be able to identify when people are struggling. But as I look at it from a government perspective and from a national readiness perspective, what I immediately think about is what are the programs that we can create to make possible places for people to live, to thrive, to learn, to participate, you know, there's there's an assumption that people can predict when someone is having um, a really hard time with life and and that we will know when it is going to be tragic and oftentimes psychologists we don't know it's one of the major reasons I am not a practicing psychologist because we are obligated to to report when we feel that someone is homicidal or suicidal and it is very hard to know when that moment is for someone. It means it's equally hard to know when they are going to do something that affects a number of people as we see in some of these mass shootings. So we need more research. We need more help for our school personnel. We need more help for our psychologists, social workers and uh, the individuals that are helping to uh, be caseworkers and, and other support system individuals, doctors, nurses, family members. We need to have outlets for them. And there's a lot that the government can do in this space. There are a lot of dollars available, but what we need to do is use them wisely. And so that's why I am excited to talk to the people that we'll be meeting today because hopefully we will shed some light on solutions. But I'd be remiss in my expectation of myself and in this project that I'm doing if I didn't take a moment to recognize what happens when we don't see those signs. And um, I would be remiss if I didn't say that we need to talk about it even when it's hard. So, so today is going to be an exceptional day Today is going to be a day that we remember harm done to many people that were brought to this country against their will, who showed strength to find their way out. 
We will talk about the tragedies that happen around this country, and we will end with a focus on solutions, ideas, and ways that we can improve this in government systems. So follow us today. It's, it's gonna be a journey.